Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back, listeners, to the finest phototainment in the world. That's right, you're listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, an irreverent look at photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. But you know who really needs to recover right now, Dustin? Oh, who, Steve? The USMNT. Is that a college? They played a tune-up match against Jamaica to get ready for their tune-up match against Venezuela in Cincinnati this Sunday. I'm going to the game on Sunday in Cincinnati. I know. Ironically, I'm shooting a wedding this weekend in Cincinnati. Could have hired me and I'd already be there. Again, you never tell me your plans. <sighs> Man, I'm sorry. So the USMNT mm-hmm. played against Jamaica. It's supposed to be like an easy game, you know, just to get them back in the, back in the groove, you know, of playing, playing that football again, soccer, playing soccer again. And uh, mm-hmm. they lost to Jamaica. Jamaica's, man, they just... First they're taking on bobsleds, now they're taking on football americano. Unstoppable those guys. Yeah, no, it's uh it was it was disheartening. I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not optimistic about this game against Venezuela. Uh it'll be fun though, especially in Cincinnati. Cincinnati's a great city. Yeah, I suppose. Not too bad. Not a shithole like Fort Wayne. Hey. <laughs> Not too shabby. I was just told we are ranked top five safest cities in the country. Yeah, cities are always safe if nobody goes there. If everybody just stays in the suburbs surrounding the city and nobody goes downtown ever, it's going to be a safe city. All the criminals are like, not much to steal there. Yeah. We're going elsewhere with our business. Criminals are like any other entrepreneur out there. They are looking for places where they can make the most money. And it's not a city like Fort Wayne where hardly anybody goes. I've been in Fort Wayne with you on multiple occasions on like Friday nights, Saturday nights. And you feel so sick. Yeah, because there's nobody in all of downtown Fort Wayne. Sunday afternoon in Fort Wayne downtown oh we close the city down and it's on sundays yeah, yeah that's the kind of city it is it's a fort wayne is like a giant chick-fil-a it's a quaint little we just city. close it down we just close <laughs> it down that's why i do all my engagement sessions on sunday because i'm a rebel dustin steven you said we have a little bit of follow-up You made an outrageous claim to me about something somebody said to you after our last episode. True. An outrageous yeah. claim. Uh, Taylor Ford, uh, one of our longtime listeners and one of my personal favorite photographers, uh, reached out to us on the Instagrams and uh, shared on her Insta stories uh, that she uh, bought her first Sony setup. And so I reached out to her to say, hey, you know, what'd you get? Uh what you know spawned this um, because it was interesting on her Instagram stories how she was saying that you know she heard that Nikon was no longer number two and that she had heard that they're now number three so she needed to get with the times and go Sony and it turned out you know that she blamed Steven Van Elk the great Indiana man uh, for her her purchase of a Sony camera setup. Now, I am checking our uh, messages on Instagram, and I, I don't see any messages from a... What was her name again? Taylor... Taylor Ford. Yeah, there's no Taylor on our messages, so... Yeah, it's because she was messaging with me directly. Oh, so she didn't mention the podcast or us. Not in her stories, mm. but I'm saying she was reciting verbatim what we talked about on the oh, episode okay 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 we're sending verbatim reads petapixel yeah. <laughs> what a <laughs> lot of different news <laughs> sources that? we're reporting who does that i mean we're just one news source out of the many many news sources <laughs> we're not a news source. no no oh, steve gosh. we are the we are the the precipice of breaking news <laughs> from other news sources speaking of breaking news doesn't I heard you have a new beer you want to talk about. (laughs) Dustin tried a new beer from Taxman. Steve's got me on this Taxman kick. And uh, now that the Fort Wayne liquor stores carry Taxman, uh, I've been trying to try a new one every week. And I tried the new Taxman margarita style spinoff because, Steven, you know me. 
I'm a longtime lover of Mountain Dew. So when I see a beer in a green lemon lime can, I can't turn that down. You know, Steve. when you texted me the message, I just saw it like in my thumbnail, you know, in the notification. And I thought, oh, did Dustin just buy a Surge? And he's sending me a picture mm -hmm. of his awesome Surge he just bought. But alas, it was not a Surge. Nope. No. No, it was a tax man. What'd you think, bud? So, yeah, it was one of the most sour beers I've ever had. Uh, it It's like, starts off, you're like, this isn't bad. And then the more you drink of it, you're like, ah, I don't think I can drink much more of this. So, t I, don't, I don't like sour beers, personally. The Taxman Margarita Style spinoff is one of the... One of the better sour beers from my perspective, because it's not that sour. <laughs> so on, on the sour spectrum, Dustin, you were very, you were very much not in the like super sour camp. So it's surprising to me that you have such hatred for this beer, which is really quite tame. I wouldn't say hatred. I will finish the four pack in which I purchased, uh, cause I don't waste beer, but, um, yeah, not my favorite from them. So I, after I finished that, I figured I would move on over to a Natterday. Dustin, 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 do you know what that means? It's Natterdays for both of us, baby. Natterday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Jen brought, Jen, Jen, Jen bought. Jen was shooting a wedding. She was afraid there's going to be a lot of rain. She didn't know that they would have a lot of sunlight. So she thought, what can I do to combat this? So she went out and she bought a six pack of uh, natural lights, you know? Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just in case. Luckily, the storm held off. She was able to get all the uh, good, good shots that she needed of the sun and the sunset and everything. Didn't have to break open the, the natural light at the at the wedding to get all those those photos she needed. So she brought one home for me out of the six pack. And she nice. only drank, I think, one and left the rest with my brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> that, if that lets you know how much she loved these beers. I'm, I know how I feel about these beers, Steve, but how do you feel? So this is my first sip, Dustin. First sip right now. Oh, wow. This is the inaugural yeah, sip. inaugural sip. Feeling pretty presidential over here. Lube up those lips. Is that good? There you go. Mm. As for our that ASMR listeners. Have you had a good palate cleanser before this? You know, let, let me get... We get a little bit of water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we go. I think I got all the the vodka and triple sack out of my mouth. I think I'm good now. Perfect. Now sprinkle some peppercorn in there. His eyes are saying a lot, folks. His eyes are saying, ooh, that is tasty. I think I would marinate a steak in that. I might name my next born child after this beer. It's that good, ladies and gentlemen. You would marinate a steak in a fruit drink dustin maybe a chicken <laughs> Stephen. okay this, this is a little better this is not good this is really bad <laughs> <laughs> what is this the the natter days it's a strawberry lemonade and drinking beer and, and i would say it's mostly strawberry lemonade very little drinking beer which is probably for the best in all honesty so, in typical Stephen and Dustin fashion, I loved this beer. I thought this beer was delicious. It just doesn't even taste um, like beer. It tastes it tastes closer to the raspberry lemonade mixed with vodka and triple sec I was drinking earlier. Like I said, it tastes delicious. Um, if you've ever been to like a McAllister's and you've gotten like one of their big lemonades or sweet teas or something, it sort of resembles that sweet tastiness. So, I can see why people are gravitating towards this like at a you know outdoor barbecue setting, you're out on the boat, you want something sweet and delicious. You didn't pack the coolest cooler, so you can't blend those fruity, frothy drinks. <sighs> so you grab yourself. No, a no. I, I would much rather. I would. I would much prefer the margarita style spinoff from Taxman that you were drinking. Uh, that is a much no, better beer than no. this. This is a piece of crap. It tastes more like strawberry lemonade than it does like beer, which is a huge negative as far as I'm concerned. I like the taste of beer. The que the question I ask is, who doesn't like strawberry lemonade? I like strawberry lemonade. I don't like okay. strawberry lemonade with a hint of beer. It's not a good taste. The two flavors don't mix. I feel like they blend fantastically. 
Mm. Ugh, yuck. You gotta finish it though, man. Yeah, no, I'm gonna finish it. I finish all my beers. Let's let's move on to some topics. Dustin. Steven. It was not Natter Day all week for everybody else, though. Mm-mm. You know, like like it was for you and me, apparently. This Over week there in the Apple Camp, it was National Cheese it Day. It was Worldwide Developers Conference, WWDC oh, this week. That's what they and call it. And Apple released a brand new Mac Pro. Dustin, what do you have to say about this Mac Pro? I know that. Did you watch the keynote? Did you watch the keynote? I didn't watch the keynote, Stephen, but I did check out all the happenings, the comings, the goings uh, of the announcement. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to pick up one of these MacBook Pros or Mac Pros uh, for all my Havartis and my Swisses. Um, I like a good mean cheese grater um, to add to my collection. I think this will really do it. It says it does it fast. It's a very fast computer. So I should be able to really, you know, lay into it with a good hearty block of cheese and really get it done quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that all you had? Is that all you had? That's that's all I had, man. I've got four of these bad boys pre-ordered. Do you know how expensive they are? Uh, price is really no object for Base me, Steve. Base price. Guessing a couple hundred. I just really just need the, the, the case. <laughs> I don't really need the innards. I mean, I we're talking Costco size blocks of cheese here, Steve. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, I need that double machine aluminium that body, twenty thousand dollars worth of of cheese graters. So the new Mac Pro mm-hmm. weighs in the starting price. The base price is around five thousand dollars, but it is supposed to be their fastest Mac Pro ever. It's even coming with. Uh, they're going to make a PCI express card for it that'll be able to handle ProRes 8K video files. I saw that. That did get me a little excited. Not that I shoot 8K, but just the ability to handle ProRes at such a fast rate. I really don't know what that means, but God, it sounds good. Um, <laughs> Pro, ProRes is <laughs> Apple's... <laughs> No, I know what ProRes okay, you, is. I meant the this the card itself. What are you? What do you? What do you not know about the card? <laughs> you look like you're taking a trip to Natterdays. Oh man, it's Natterday over here. <laughs> I'm natting all over the place. I just want you to continue. What, what were you gonna say? I just didn't know what the what the card did. Uh, I didn't have time to check out the actual specs of that individual card because the computer is very modular in nature. There's a lot of add-ons as far as functionality goes, and I'm losing my voice. Well, that's the great thing about the computer is it is a return to the original sort of style and form of a tower that looks like a cheese grater, just like the original Mac Pros. <laughs> um, except this one comes with wheels, which is a huge advantage. But it's very modular, so That's, you can... Uh, that justifies yeah. that five grand upgrade for yeah, sure. it's very modular, so you can like put in different PCI Express cards and stuff, depending on what your needs are. So you can suit, you know, build, build a computer to suit your own needs. And you can price them out. You can you can price it out. It starts at five thousand. I think you can price it out with like stuff Apple sells, all the way up to like a twenty thousand dollar machine for your computer. That's with the wheels. <laughs> well, I mean, they are perfect wheels, so. Because yeah, they were boasting that you know now you don't need to build an attachment to your wheelchair. Now you can just literally put the uh, Mac next to it, and it'll clip on, and it'll scoot with you. So you can never stop gaming. You don't even need to walk when you game. Nobody uses Macs to game, Dustin. They're strictly for design. Have you seen that graphics photo and card? Video editing and programming. Have you seen the graphics card? It doesn't matter. Nobody uses Macs to game. It's all about PCs when it comes to gaming. This might be the PC killer. The Mac Pros, the original Mac Pros, the uh, the original cheese grater Mac Pros were so good that, you know, people thought the same thing and they just never took off. Never took off. Anybody who had a Mac Pro and wanted to game had to install, what was it, Boot Camp? So they could boot into Windows and play games on their Mac Pro via Windows. And even then it wasn't a great experience. <sighs> but it could be. No, it couldn't be. So... I'm excited about this, and you want to know why I'm excited, 
Dustin. I always want to know. I always want to know why, Steve. You are excited. My theory. I I, I have a theory, Dustin. Dustin, uh-huh. are you familiar with Patrick Rothfuss? I can't say that I am, Steve. Mm. Damn. Can't say are that you I familiar am. with the King Killer Chronicles? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so Patrick Rothfuss, he's an author. He wrote a series of books, The King Killer Chronicles. It's supposed to be a trilogy, uh-huh. and he's released two books so far. The first book was released in 2007. One year after the first Mac Pro was released, that was released in 2006. And I'm going to explain why this is important to you. Don't worry. So first book comes out, Name of the Wind. Amazing book. Really great. Don't read it if you are maybe, I would say, a woman or into feminism at all. <laughs> it's, it's, but you it's basically it. It's basically male characters who do everything, and none of the female characters have much uh, say or much to do. So uh, I would say it's not the greatest book in terms of representation, but it's, it's a very well-written book. It's very interesting. Um, anyway, he writes the first one, 2007, a year after the Mac Pro comes out. Then he's working on the second book called The Wise Man's Fear. That book doesn't come out until 2011, a year before the Mac Pro trash can, or no, two years before the Mac Pro trash can comes out. So he set a precedent. It's going to be like four years between, you know, each book, right? So now he's had a, he has a third book that's supposed to be coming out, but it hasn't come out yet. It should have been released in 2015 waiting. based on his precedent. But yes, Dustin here is what happened. Between 2007 and 2011, people asked him what was taking so long to write the second book, The Wise Man's Fear. And Patrick Rothfuss said in an interview... Writing the follow-up novel to his first novel was like masturbating with a cheese grater. To which I submit, he hasn't been able to put out that third book because they took away the cheese grater Mac Pros. He can't write anymore. He can't, you know, that's, that's his process apparently is <laughs> masturbating with that cheese grater. That's how he writes. He hasn't been able to write because they, they put out that smooth, you know, trash can thing. So he just can't get the work done. Now, it's 2019. We got a cheese grater coming back, a cheese grater Mac. That means the third and final book in the King Killer Chronicle should be coming out very soon. This, this is, is my so theory. Pretty. He had a lot of fans send him cheese graters and large tubs of like industrial <laughs> lubrication. I tried to... With little, like, notes that say, you can do it. All right, Dustin, let's move on. Uh, No, you didn't answer the question, though, Steve. And the question at hand our listeners want to know is, Stephen Van Elk going to replace the cheese grater on his desk that does not even (laughs) work, that's simply there as a paperweight into time to remember and to, to, you know, cherish what once was... Mm -hmm. An amazing machine. Will Stephen Van Elk replace his Mac Pro for the new, the improved cheese grater upgrade? No way, it's too expensive. I can't afford that crap. Steve, you're worth it, man. Uh, my Mac Pro I only have because when I owned my own video production company, we bought another video production company um, that was going out of business, and we acquired um, several of their Mac Pros. And we didn't have any need for them at the time, so I bought mine from my business partner because, you know, it was just collecting dust otherwise, and I wanted to have a Mac Pro at home. So that's uh, that's that story, and unless I find a sweet-ass deal like that again, it's not going to happen. I think it could. I really think it could, Stephen. There's always a possibility. Doesn't you want to buy? Do you do you want to buy a Mac Pro and then shut down Big Burrito Creative? And then- and then sell mm-hmm. sell it to me. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I want to do. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love it if you did that. Dustin. Would, would you like to buy we, Big Burrito Creative? No. I was looking <laughs> around on the internets, and I saw on Quora, I believe it's called, there Quora? was somebody asking the question. Not a photographer, just a rando. And they said, can you ask your wedding photographer to take as few photos as possible? Of a bridesmaid that you're falling out with. Mm-hmm. And how did you respond? I did not respond. What was your answer? I don't play around on Quora. Uh, Come on. 
too dangerous? It's too legitimate. You know, if I'm going to play around in a space, I want it to be a space like Facebook groups. <laughs> Where the, the terrible jokes I make will never make it out to the real world unless I choose to say them on the podcast. <laughs> oh, Steven. You know, we all need a place to test out jokes, Dustin, and Quora is just not the place for me. Mm, I'm, re- I'm all over Quora. Oh, so I assume you already responded so, to this person? Oh, all the time. I have many aliases. So what happens when somebody asks you if you can take as few photos as possible of a bridesmaid? I've never been asked uh, a bridesmaid, but I have been asked in the past of a bridesmaid's like boyfriend or girlfriend mm-hmm. if we could like not get many photos of them because either A, the bride didn't think they were going to be in the picture much longer. Ooh, snap. Um, recently, I had a bride ask me not to get photos of the dad's girlfriend because she wasn't, uh, she was still married mm-hmm. and um, didn't want her husband to see that she was at a wedding with another man because they were like just starting the divorce or something like that. We've had brides and grooms ask us before if we could not post about uh, or not take pictures of guests at the wedding. Typically, it's Hmm. like just a random guest, though, not somebody who's actually going to be in the photos. Because if there's somebody who's going to be in the photos that they won't want photos of, they typically don't ask them to be in the bridal party. So it's happened a few times. And every time it happens, Jen and I's first response is always witness protection system. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's like no because if he was he wouldn't be here hanging out with his family at a wedding he would be you know underground somewhere now i just would i would assume the classic van elk response is i'm sorry it's all or nothing we either photograph all your guests <laughs> or none of your guests so none of your guests okay yeah, no, we actually, uh, we have a headshot booth that we set up at every single wedding we do. And when people come <laughs> in to the wedding at the very back, before, you know, they walk down the aisle to their seats, we actually do a quick headshot of them. We set it back up at the reception in case, you know, there's anybody who missed the ceremony but came for the reception. And uh, we just make sure every single guest pops in. We take a quick headshot and then we offer to sell it to them at a later date, you know? That's the Dustin and Corinne way. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm picking things up from you, buddy. I'm learning. So I'm glad that we could uh, expand your business. Yeah, it's like if I have to shoot this wedding anyway, I might as well see if I can make a few extra bones doing headshots while I'm there. You know, I'm bored. Gotta anyway. figure out a way to afford all this tax, man. It's not like I have too much to do with the wedding or anything already. <laughs> it's not like I'm right. incredibly busy. Correct. I'm glad oh, you're man. coming around. I shot a wedding this weekend with listener Jackie Santana, and she showed up at Wait, the wedding. The, the Jackie Santana? Jackie Santana. She showed up Holy at the cow. wedding with a Mountain Dew Kickstarter That's for good. me. Because we oh talked about gosh. it on the show. I, I don't recall us ever talking about Mountain Dew Kickstarter, nor would I ever feed your mm. caffeine addiction. Maybe, maybe Sorry, we talked Steve. about it in the group or something? I don't know. Jackie and I have definitely yeah. messaged about it because we both love the kickstart. We both need the kickstart. The kickstart is good. The kickstart is all that is good. Mm. So you're what you're saying though, she didn't show up with a surge. In the beginning, there was the kickstart and the kickstart was good. And the kickstart kickstarted our universe. She didn't get you a surge though. No, she did not. She's not really a true fan. Um, No, I'd say she's the truest of fans. <laughs> <laughs> We all, we all know how poorly the, the surge ended for me last time. Gosh, it was like every sip I just wanted to throw up. It was a, it was mm. a one joke I made to my mom. She buys me a case of surge, and I feel like I have to finish it. Huge mistake. That is. Your kidneys and liver are still paying the price. Yeah. It's okay. I'm sure she got that sweet laugh in the end. I'm sorry. It, my kidneys and my liver? My kidneys, yes. My liver? Mm-hmm. How does sugar affect your liver? I thought it was just alcohol. Correct. But your uh, liver, the way it formulates sugar, it turns it into yeast, which turns it into alcohol. Oh, I'm, I'm a walking how... drunk. Is that what you're saying? I have that <laughs> exactly. disease? Cool. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Every, every time I eat a big, big bowl of bread, I just get real drunk. <laughs> I'm glad you're coming to terms. That's the first step, Steve. <laughs> There's like people who actually have that disease where every time they eat I carbs... Know. Yeah, and they just walk around all day at like a at a very high blood alcohol content level. Mm-hmm. They'll be at like a point 
like a point zero three, like all day, just plowing through life. Let's just when you see him at Panera and they order the bread bowl, you say, "Are you sure about that, buddy?" I want to watch yourself. Exactly. I mean, awful. Red Bull might be a bit. It'd be an awful condition much. to live with, though. Those people, like, it's very difficult for them to actually get quote unquote drunk because their tolerance is so high because they're drunk all the time, basically. Right. But think about it. They don't have to drink alcohol and they get to enjoy carbs <laughs> and they get to feel hungover all the time. Yeah. It's a win win, Steve. It's a win win, massive lose. Win win, <laughs> massive lose. So I would say to respond to this random person on Quora, uh, it, yeah, you can totally ask your photographer not to take photos of a bridesmaid. How often do you take photos of the bridesmaids other than the bridal portraits anyway? All the time for me. For realsies? Yeah. For realsies though? You've already booked and shot the wedding at this point, Steve. How are you going to get more weddings? You know, in theory, the chances of that couple getting divorced and rebooking you, not really what you need to plan your business model around. Mm-hmm. Now, all of those bridesmaids, that's five opportunities potentially right there for another wedding. I guess. Once that wedding, once that I do goes, you know, comes across my desk and that's been captured, I'm on to getting the next wedding, Stephen. So the next. My attention (laughs) is diverted. Like the last five weddings I've shot, the bridesmaids have all been already married. You need to be breaking that shit up at the reception then. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go around at the reception and just break up all their marriages. (laughs) How am I going to do that? With this body? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Exactly. I'll just kill the lights. I've heard people like the sound of my voice. I'll just kill the lights and then I'll whisper in their ears. Did you see your wife was looking at me? At me. Yeah. I oh, look like this. Oh, oh, so what are you doing wrong? So that's how I'm going to do it. Okay. Okay. I was going the other way in my mind. I thought I was seducing people. <laughs> do you see your wife you over there? Wouldn't you rather? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just seducing their husbands. Um, okay, I never said it was too. a husband. <laughs> oh, didn't you? I did not. No. Okay. I just said they had a wife. That's all I said. You made assumptions. Assumptions I did make. Dustin, what is it like mm-hmm. being a photographer in your 30s? You're new to the 30 game, so thought we should go to you. There was a recent article written on F-Stoppers by, mm-hmm. I think his name's Scott Cicino, Cochino. Um, mm-hmm. But it's all mm-hmm. about how your photography business changes once you hit your 30s. Uh, I don't know if I'd really say... My photography business changed at 30. Uh, I would say my focus is being driven in a lot more directions at the age of 30, uh, causing me to become a better multitasker um, at 30. Mm-hmm. But but like he said in the article, um, the, and the article really is aimed at people who have been doing this like as long as Steven and I, uh, people who have been doing this for at least like 10 years. Um, so you really can feel the evolution of your business through your age and how your age uh, proportionally affects your business. Um, and I can definitely relate to him on the things like wedding photo hangover type syndromes where you can shoot a wedding in your 20s and go party the next day like nothing happened. Uh, whereas now we shoot a wedding and I feel like I'm dead the next day. Mm-hmm. The worst is like the feeling you get in your legs where they feel almost like you're in pain every time you try to stand up or move or go up the stairs or down the stairs. Well, I think it was you who said you come home from weddings and go for a run. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I had to do to combat that. So you have like a bunch of lactic acid that's built up in your legs from all the work you've done all day and you, uh, you need to break it back up. That's like what we always used to do. Uh, like when I ran cross country in high school, have you heard of stretching? Nothing helps as much as a good run, Dustin. <laughs> Just trust me on this. What about what about a good bang? A good bang? Yeah. Are you making a dirty sex joke? Are you making a dirty sex joke on our podcast? I I I'm I was talking about Bang Bang Shrimp from 
your favorite thing in the world. Bonefish. Yes. Um, but yeah. there's no bonefish in Fort Wayne, so you're all out of luck. I know. Um, all out of luck. Uh, no, I found that uh, once I got once once I got into my thirties, w- the wedding hangover got a lot worse. And once I started doing things like going for a jog when I got back from a wedding, or just a walk, even um, it really helped because at the end of the wedding day, like I just felt sore and stiff already. And so, just trying mm-hmm. to break up that lactic acid already that night um, created a much better day for me the next day. And uh, Stephen Van Elk switches shoes on his drive home yeah but i switch shoes when i go running too i don't i don't wear my driving loafers when i'm running he's a he's a man of many <laughs> shoes ladies and gentlemen many shoed man many shoed man that's his memoirs yes Stephen van elk the many shoed man <laughs> yeah, yeah two feet many shoes is that, is that is that everything? Uh, he also talks in the in the article. I think it's Scott Chosino, maybe because it's C H. I thought it was C O U C H, but it's C H O U C I N O. Um, but anyway, he talks about how when you're in your 30s, you start to feel more confident, and I would say I feel that way very much. I feel like I didn't have a lot of confidence in my 20s. Dustin is somebody who would impress me as the opposite of that, though. I feel like Dustin's oh, yeah. losing confidence every single podcast we do with each other. It's, I'm just eroding it away from him slowly. I was always about the fake it till you make mm-hmm. it mentality. And now you're wondering if you're ever going to make it. <laughs> if you're ever going to make it, you always got to fake it. Uh, dude, the one thing I don't get is he says once you're in your 30s, you can finally afford the gear. And I'm just like, no, no. If I could afford the gear, I'd be upgrading to Sony's right now. For my video stuff. Well, you got to remember, in the uh, the guy who wrote the article isn't necessarily specifying wedding photography. He shoots commercial photography. Yep. Which, if you do that successfully, you make a hell of a lot more money than wedding photographers. Yeah, we, that's why we got to get out of this shit. We got to get into the commercial world. You're telling me. Yeah, I am you telling you. I, telling. I just told you. <laughs> Did you not hear me tell you? Just gotta gotta keep telling me, Steve. Uh, there is one thing I, that really resonated with me that he wrote about, though, and it was that you still feel too young, but the young people think you're too old. I get that a lot, like when working weddings, where people will call me like a kid or whatever, but then I'll have like a second shooter there who's in their twenties or whatever, and they'll speak to me like an old man, and it's just so so hurtful on both ends. <laughs> I know you don't like it when it's hurtful in both ends, but, um, I met with a bride yesterday, a uh, bride and groom, and I've really, I really was feeling my age at this meeting, but, um, something came up. I can't remember what we were talking about. Um, but somehow they made a reference and I was like, Oh, it's kind of like minority report. And then I jokingly said, oh, you guys probably are too young. You don't even know what that movie was. Thinking, who the heck would not know the movie Minority Report? And they were like, no, we're the same age as you, and we still don't know what that movie is. No, they were like sophomores in college. And they were, you know, they were like, uh, no, we don't know what Minority Report don't is. Don't lie. She said that, and he was like, ever since I was a young boy, I dreamed of being a precog. <laughs> For real, Dustin, for real, I just got to let you know, I see in your future, three days from now, you get hit by a car. And uh, we're just taking this meeting with you to make you feel good, but... Are you driving the car? Damn, Dustin, how'd you know that? (laughs) Can't predict the future, Steve, if you're the one creating it. (laughs) Just saying. Just saying. I love that movie. Why? Why? So many moral dilemmas in that movie. Just one. Just one moral dilemma. Is it okay to arrest somebody for committing a crime they haven't committed yet? That's the only moral dilemma. That's it. Right there. Yeah. One dilemma, though, is whether or not you like Tom Cruise. (laughs) (laughs) The answer to that is a resounding yes from everyone in the world. So, second, Second moral dilemma. How does his height not affect his acting? There is that scene where he's uh, at the wall computers 
And he's like, oh, I just gotta, I gotta get that picture up there at the top and drag it down. Just, uh, everybody, um, just, just, just look away. And then he spends like five minutes just jumping up, trying to grab the picture at the top with his <laughs> hand so he can drag it down with their future computers. And it's, it's very pathetic and kind of weird. And I was kind of like, why did they leave that in the movie? <laughs> Was it just to yeah. embarrass Tom Cruise because he's so short? Because like a normal like six foot man like myself could have just easily just reached up, grabbed that picture, dragged it down for the scene. You know, just easy, real normal sort of stuff. Or just slid him onto a Tom Cruise box. Yeah, you know, could have put him right up on one of those Tom Cruise boxes, and he could have got it real easy. But no, they they made the choice in the script that they wanted him to jump and miss several times in a row. I feel like you, Steven, are one person who probably after you see movies, somehow you find copies of their scripts and you like read them and check them out. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, that, I've done that before. <laughs> yeah, I, that I, I really like, like uh, I like reading, I like writing, and um, I really like movies. So that that makes a lot of sense. When I was a kid, I thought I wanted to be a screenplay writer, like a, a script script writer. Let's do some Q and A, Dustin. Let's do it, bud. Let's do some Q&A. But, but Steve. Our first question this week comes from Bryce Michael Keegan Hudson from our very own Facebook group. Bryce says, so what's the weirdest thing you have done for your business? For me, I was in between jobs a couple of years back and was trying to figure out how I should price myself for photos as I was coming out of my first wedding season. Since I had some time and was curious, I decided to generate analytics on the average prices that local photographers charge and categorize them by style, location, and perceived quality. To do this, I put on my crazy ex-girlfriend hat, generated a fake email address, collected all the data I could from web pages to start my 200-person catalog, and then sent the inquiries for my fictitious characters to said photographers. In the end, I got a ton of information, saw people responded to emails and priced themselves, which was great at the time. Fast forward to this past weekend where I was looking at increasing pricing again and obviously came back to this very same spreadsheet. When I was looking at it, I was taken aback and a little dumbfounded that I actually did this, not only for how awkward it was sending fake inquiries to people in the business, a number of which I have now met in person over the past couple of years, but also for the amount of time that took. Anyways, here's to hoping that others have done similarly neurotic things. Um, and the crazy ex-girlfriend thing is a reference to the TV show, not to a crazy ex-girlfriend Bryce had, I assume. Because that'd be kind of a weird, weird thing to say. Which Steve loves. I do love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the craziest thing I've ever done was I sang a song about taking out a hit on somebody's no. <laughs> <laughs> Just dipping into the crazy ex girlfriend oh, world. Sorry. You were referencing yeah. a nope. show that none of us have seen. Got mm -hmm. it. Perfect. No, I opened a pretzel stand. Uh, I quit the business and opened a pretzel stand, and that's how uh, we did things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the craziest thing uh, you've done in starting your business? I don't think there's a lot of really crazy things that Jen and I did. Um, we, yeah, you're pretty modest, pretty tame people. We, we did, uh, we, we got inquiries like the one Bryce is talking about when we first started out and you could always kind of smell that something was off and you kind of knew that like, Hey, if I do a Facebook search for this person, nothing will come up. Let me do a Facebook search for this person. Nothing came up. Let me just send them back an email before I send them pricing and other information and just say, hey, I would love to meet with you in person or talk to you on the phone. And then they never get back to you. We still get that every once in a while. That's We, we don't typically give out pricing through email. So I'm very curious as to how this worked for Bryce because like, as a general rule, I would say as a photographer, don't give your pricing out through email always say, Hey, I want to meet with you in person. Hey, I want to talk to you on the phone, you know, do something where <laughs> you put them in a really crazy ex-girlfriend situation where they have to come to you, uh, in person and don a fake character and play act the whole time and try to not get busted. Sounds fun to me. Yeah. So what's the craziest thing you've ever done, Dustin? Cause I know you've done a lot of crazy things. Um, 
gosh, the list is so long, Stephen. I mean, I've definitely done what Bryce is referencing here. I've done that in the past uh, when I was first starting. <laughs> yeah, off, I got an email just last week from one, DJ Dmac Attack asking for my pricing. DJ yeah. DJ Double D Mac Attack. Yeah, and it, it it was from DJ Double D Mac Attack at dustinmckibben.com and i was like why would you do mm-hmm. that dustin everybody can clearly I've been see. selling i've been selling email accounts off to potential bride and grooms <laughs> um i'm just practically a saint i know uh it's something we're using as promotion to get brides to book uh but then we also recommend fellow vendors um <laughs> and then to, to then those, those brides and grooms create dj double d mac attack user accounts on your email mm-hmm address that you Correct. gave them and then you sent to yep. email your competitors exactly mm-hmm. you're getting it steve you're really catching on um to the promotion that we're running um but no i i reached out uh to people because i was curious um uh here locally back when i first got started everyone was in this sort of shroud of secrecy and nobody would help anyone or share anything um, and so, so you had to, you had had to, to trick them. Mm-hmm. I had to eat right through that shroud to just kind of figure out where, cause I was coming from New York. I had no clue what the starting prices were here in Fort you, Wayne. You, you had to take what, what little trust still existed in that community and just completely destroy it. You can't Correct. build a new community of trust if you don't completely destroy the existing community. That's just a basic Exactly. Uh, I had to burn the city down before I could rebuild it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, so I'm not proud of it, but it helped, uh, like Bryce said, shed some light on where we were with things as a community. Um, and as far as pricing went, gave me a good heads up on where I should land and where I should start and kind of built from there. So you would recommend this, uh, these shenanigans to anybody else out there? Uh, I wouldn't recommend them. I, of course, ask other photographers first for their pricing. Uh, I said, you know, the typical, hey, I'm new to the area. Uh, I think, in fact, I went to like a bridal show and uh, thinking people would be giving out their pricing at the bridal show and they were were not. (laughs) And I was just like, hey, you know, I'm just a new photographer to the area, just trying to get my feet wet. Um, any idea? I'm just coming from New York. I want to make sure I'm not overpriced, um, based on what I'm used to charging there. And everybody was like, "Fuck you, jerk!" Yeah, pretty <laughs> Get much. The hell out of here! Much. You think exactly. we want more that competition sort of coming in here? Get the f- out! <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was a real inviting environment. And so I said, "Okay, well, when you get an email from Stevana." Van Elka, mm-hmm. uh, whose wedding is all the time, you'll know. So you'll know. So I would say that just about the craziest thing uh, Jen and I probably ever did was when we were getting started, we um, we found out that there was a photographer who had done all this work to find out uh, at what everybody had done and um, pricing wise and everything. His name was Dustin and he kept it in a super, super secret location locked underground. And, uh, Jen and I actually had to cra- crawl, crawl our way through the ductwork of the location. Um, cause it's the only place without like lasers and stuff that could get us. And then, um, mm-hmm. Jen mm-hmm. actually had to lower me down, which was weird. Cause I weigh a lot more than her. So you'd think we'd go the other way, but she actually lowered me down. A lot of people think you guys would go the yeah. other way, but you know, <laughs> she had, she actually had to lower me down. Um, and then there was like a pressure sensitive floor underneath and, uh, I had to hang from the ceiling vent and, uh, we had to like shut off the motion sensors and everything in the room. I only had about 30 seconds to get in and get out mm-hmm. and I had to uh, type in, um, the password this is the longest steal, sex metaphor I've ever heard. Steal all the information um, before getting out of there. Yeah. So to summarize, you went down on Jennifer, and you had thirty seconds mm-hmm. on a pressure mm-hmm. sensitive pressure sensitive, sensitive floor. button area that you needed to mm. get the job yeah. done, and you got it done, buddy. 
you know, if you saw Mission Impossible, you might think that would be like really tough, but because I'm so much taller than Tom Cruise, it's pretty easy for me. <laughs> yep. yep. You know, that was his real problem real in good. that scene. He just wasn't tall enough. Wasn't enough hair gel, is what I was told. <laughs> Sky Simone from our very own Facebook group says, I have a question, and it's a genuine question. If mm-hmm. your second shooter took 2,400 images and at least half were out of focus and another quarter were oddly composed, what would you think hmm. or say? This person doesn't take well to critique at the best of times. Well, I don't know what I would think or say because um, I've never been in this situation. But as somebody who's uh, put somebody else in this situation, I would say uh, mm-hmm. like a, a response I've seen a lot is like you then ask the person to start a podcast with you and then complain about <laughs> it on the podcast uh, over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah I think Do you? that's typically. Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff like Steve screwed up the audio, Steve screwed up the audio. I can't believe I hired Steve to do the audio and he screwed up the audio. Um, Steve's real bad at the audio. I'm just going through like the last five episodes. Those are just some things I heard. Steve, you sound like you're sort of self-conscious about some sort of audio. I don't know, man. I just, it's just something that I feel like I've been hearing a lot. If only you had taken that test at Ball State to get that certification. Damn you. Damn you. You could have been an audio wizard. Yeah, if you were running a system that was hooked into a Pro Tools computer, I could have helped you out. A Pro Tools computer that was running a a copy of Pro Tools that was used, that was made and used 10 years ago. I would have been aces for you. (laughs) Someday. Someday we'll get there, Steven. So, Dustin, how would you submit a critique? Uh, It's pretty easy, Sky Simone from our very own Facebook group. Um, I would simply ask them for my money back first and foremost. You never asked me for the money um, back. <laughs> it's because I love you too much, Steven. Because I knew when I hired you, I was really just paying for you to come to Fort Wayne. You're too kind. The cost. The cost of the ticket. The golden ticket. Hasn't, hasn't hired me to come back to Fort Wayne since. <laughs> Sky Simone, if your second shooter took 2,400 images... My question to you is, why did you hire this person? If I'm sorry, what? You, why did she hire this person? If did they come recommended? Like what was, like what was the criteria? Were you just looking for somebody who had a camera? Oh, I mean that's a good that's a good point. Was maybe part of the requirements of when Sky was looking for a second shooter? Did she say like mm-hmm. you have to take over? 2,399 photos while your second shooting was like shit I don't normally take that many when I second shoot um here's the bathroom here's a selfie here's the groom and uh focus not important she didn't specify to me when hiring me that I needed 2,400 photos that were in focus just that I needed to take 2,400 images Mm -hmm. so jen and i kind of ran the gamut this weekend because we had uh four shoots going on on the same day and uh how did you not open with that (laughs) i don't like to talk about about our personal stuff man come on it's not personal it's business (sighs) it's our personal business um (laughs) four weddings in one weekend is kind of a big deal one day how is your butthole (laughs) feeling (laughs) oh yeah four events in one day uh, I, well, technically it was three events, but we were doing photo and video at one of the events. So we had two teams there. That counts as four. Yeah. So, um, we, we had a pretty wide range as far as second shooters went. We had one second shooter who shot over 3000 photos, had another one who shot a little over 2300 and then another one who only shot 900. And I gotta say going through all their photos, uh, they all did a great job. Like, so I'm not worried about like the one who shot 900 or the one who shot 3000. Like it's pretty easy to go through. So, uh, Colleen, Colleen was a breeze and, you know, all of them were hey, shooting uh, stuff that was, you know, in focus though. So, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't mind somebody shooting like 3000 photos because Colleen can be really easy with that. Cause a lot of times if somebody's shooting that much, they're shooting like three to five photos, every single pose somebody's in. You know, like they're real quick snapping because they want to make sure they get a good one where the person's not blinking or whatever, um, which I understand. So 
culling through that's really easy. I just take the first one that looks good, ignore the next four, you know, to get to the next pose or whatever. So culling through is a breeze, but it took me as long to mm -hmm. cull uh, the second shooter's photos who did the 3,000 as it took me to do the second shooter who did the 900. So, Did you end up finding someone to do video? Yes. And, the, and did you end up finding a bunch of people who couldn't do video? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I did post about that in the Facebook group. Uh, <laughs> so we had a, we had a second shooter who was set to do video with us, and he had a family emergency crop up. So we had to find somebody else, and we f he found out he wasn't going to be able to do it Wednesday. So we had Thursday, Friday to try to find somebody, and luckily we found someone in the area who was able to shoot for us and uh the person did as far as i've seen from the video i haven't gone through all the footage yet but from what i have seen he did a really good job he also uh we also hired him because he's drone certified so he flew a phantom four for us and that way you know we didn't have to worry about um getting in trouble with drone stuff so that's always a plus but he did shoot nice. um he shot on a sony nes any uh, no, not NES. Uh, Sony, it's like a F seven hundred NES F seven hundred or something like that. It's like a ten year old camera, but it's like really high quality. And um, he had like an Olympus thing hooked up to it, like a monitor. But the it can output four K video to the monitor, and then he can record from the monitor. So he had asked me ahead of time like what I wanted him to record at all day, and I was like, oh. Uh, I don't need anything over 1080p because of what the contract states I'm going to give the client. Um, and he proceeded to shoot everything at 2K and uh, <laughs> 2K uncompressed, so raw. And uh, mm. yeah, I have like, he, he gave me like 500 gigs worth of clips. It was great. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. I had to leave my computer running for like the last day and a half to create proxy media so that I could edit all that. But if, if you I bought, bought that cheese Mac grater, Pro, <laughs> I wouldn't have to do that. I could just edit the file straight proxies. up. Yeah. Well, I have to get the Mac Pro and then I'd have to get that PCI Express card that can handle exactly. the 8K, up to 8K footage in ProRes. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Go. So, so that, that's, that's going to be interesting and fun to, to go through. I'm, I'm planning on getting my edit started tomorrow, but I just finished doing a bunch of work for the photo weddings that we shot. So it's been a, it's been a very busy week for me. I can imagine. I, you guys do a pretty fast turnaround time. Oh so yeah. All three of the events in one week, all three of the weddings that we did photo for are already edited. And Jen is currently, well, not currently cause then we won't be able to Skype, but she's already exported one of them. The other two are exporting right now and then she's uploading them to pass after after we're done here you guys are so flipping fast yeah yeah well i mean do you ever get a bride who's like do you really do any work on these photos because you're so fast <laughs> um no we've never had a bride say that so disappointed well uh, that's another thing like the way jen has like chosen to take our editing is like a stylized um edit so it looks it doesn't look like it's straight out of camera. It looks like work has been done to it. And the idea is to create something that looks more like what you might see in a magazine or something like that. Like that's the kind of edit style. Because of that, we don't we don't have brides and grooms who are like, are these edited or not? Um so that's a that's a plus. But back to Sky Simone's question. Um one way you could critique them, Sky, is simply just say, Hey, I noticed when going through your photos, um, a few issues. Could I sit down with you with your camera and see if maybe you have a camera issue? And then when there's clearly not a camera issue and they're like, Sky, what happened? Why Why are you checking out my camera? You say, because you're an idiot and t half of your photos were out of focus. So I assumed you couldn't be that big of an idiot. I mean, that's that's one way you could handle it. I mean, I feel like I felt like the the way you're going with that, as you say, could I sit down with you and check out your camera to see if there's any issues with it, and then you shoot with it. All the pictures look just spot on, great, you know, composed perfect, really, you know, sharp, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. tech sharp focus. 
and then you hand them the camera and they take some photos and then um, their photos are crappily composed and they're blurry. You realize they're yeah. blind. And then you take the camera and you just go, I thought that maybe there was an issue with your camera because all your photos look like shit. And then you just take the camera and you slam it down onto the desk and you just do this multiple times and you go, oh, I guess there is a problem with your camera. And then you walk away. <laughs> I like that one, Sky. Go with mm-hmm. that one. You have insurance, right, Sky? <laughs> it's not a question of whether or not you have insurance. It's a question of whether or not they have insurance at that point, Dustin. This and wasn't on an counsel? official working day. <laughs> do you have a problem with your camera? Now you do. <laughs> it's like some real straight up mob style stuff. Right now there. we have an explanation for why your photos look like shit. <laughs> Does anybody else want to give me shitty photos today? <laughs> Anyone? Good. Now I can explain to the couple why their photos are out of focus. Just let me take a picture of your camera real quick so they know what you are working with. <laughs> oh. Anyways, next question, Steve, comes from a random Facebook group. You pulling a rando on me? I'm pulling straight from the randos. Is that yeah, okay? That's fine. Abby from the Facebook group asks the following. I had her sign a cancellation contract, but I did not state in there that the complimentary session were not cash value. Am I screwed? Edit. Last year, I had a bride contact me, book a wedding, and paid her balance in full. Months prior to the wedding... My contract stated it was non-refundable 60 days prior. Her wedding was canceled a month to her date, and I still agreed to do a small partial refund, which was half the total of the retainer, as well as the complimentary engagement session. The cancellation contract stated when the refund would be completed, refunded in increments, and that I offered a session as well. I am super annoyed because I didn't have to refund her anything. Help. How do I respond? So hey, here girl, is, here's the question. You got to read it like uh, mm-hmm. it was written. <clears throat> yep. Let me channel my inner bride voice. Hey girl, it's blankety blank. I'm <laughs> the one who had my wedding canceled last year. You offered me one or two free sessions, but we won't use it due to the drive. I'm going through hard times right now. You know what I mean? And I was wondering, instead of the sessions, if you could just maybe PayPal me for however much a session I'd, because we would use a lot of gas. Coming to you exclamation mark well <laughs> oh, blankety blank it's you know me, me abby your, you know me? your friendly photographer let me just paypal you real quick <laughs> abby has your voice real quick for that uh, that amount that was a free session correct all right here uh check your paypal i believe you just got a paypal for free <laughs> i love a free pal i mean a pay free a free PayPal. I believe we're done here, <laughs> Abby. PayPal needs to institute a service where you can just send somebody something that just says like... Inst- like a yeah, wave? In- instead of like a money, you just send them something that's like a little F and a U. You know, like F U. And that way... Like, or a they digital just high five? A digital high five. Wait, did they sign up on our Patreon? <laughs> so it goes like a, like a high five and then it does one of these where it like the hand twists in midair. Kind of like, like a backflip. And then it goes, whoosh. Oh, you want to flip somebody off. For those of you who are listening to the podcast, which is all of you, Dustin just flipped me off. (laughs) That's what happened. He put his hand up like he wanted me to slap my computer's camera because that's where he was holding his hand, like up in front of the camera. And then he just flipped me off, though, when I started to act like I was going to go in for it. Like, oh, yeah, let's high five, buddy. And then, no, no, he just flipped me off. No. Man, I feel real sad now. Why would you do that to me? That's what I need PayPal to start doing. My contract stated it was non-refundable. Am I screwed? 
because she signed a consolation contract, but I did not say state that the complimentary sessions were not cash value. No, you're not screwed because they were complimentary sessions or free sessions. Keyword complimentary. Yeah. You're you're in the clear, Abby. You don't have to worry about this. This person's just trying to get some money back from you. Uh, mm-hmm. And I mean, you can give them the money back or you can not. And I'm just going to tell you, Abby, right now, if you don't give them the money back, you're going to get some bad reviews. <laughs> you're definitely going to get some bad reviews. That's why you constantly change the name of your business, Abby, like me. Yeah. It used to be uh, DustinMcKibben.com. Then it was DustinCorin.com. Now it's uh, BigBurrito.com. And I believe you just told me next year, you're rolling out a new name. Uh, do you want to reveal the name right now on the podcast for everybody? Van Elk Photo. <laughs> Wait, is that why you paid me for all those photos of Jen and I? Dustin. Dustin. Van Elk Photo, guys. If you really feel the need to get a jump start on bad reviews of Van Elk Photo, <laughs> head on over. Google it. You'll find a few different domain opportunities. Just drop those comments in there wherever you see fit. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, Steve, if you want the people to know, I just, I must be honest with them. You gotta be. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything from you other than complete and total honesty. Exactly. That's why I just want to say thanks for doing another episode of this podcast with me, Dustin. And thanks to all of our listeners for listening to the Wedding Photo Hangover this week. If you want to help us out, jump on iTunes or Stitcher, where you can leave us a five-star review. The same sort of review you should leave for Van Elk Photo, if you know, you're know you thinking about leaving a review for them. If you want to connect, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Wedding Photo Hangover or on Twitter at Wedpick Hangover. Dustin is on Instagram at Dustin underscore McKibben. And Steven is at Steven Van Elk. If you want to get involved with the awesome community of listeners, join the Wedding Hangover Facebook group. But if you really want to warm our hearts, put your mother gun boots on and head Whoa. on over to Steve wow. and Dustin Save the World dot com. World. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put your world saving sunglasses on. You can sign up to support us there on what's, Patreon. It's funny though, Steve. They, people don't even know what that reference means unless they go over there and check <laughs> it out. You can sign up to support us for as little as $1 a month where you still won't get the reference. If you sign up for $5 <laughs> a month, though, you'll get all the bonus content, and then you'll you'll understand that good, good reference I made. And the reference, my friends, is worth it all on its own. <laughs> It's extremely helpful to us, though, and to the making of this podcast. It lets us upgrade equipment, buy new microphones. We need new microphones pretty bad. Um, we just want we want our voices to sound as good as they possibly can for all of you. That's just what it is. Mainly just for us. Yeah. Mainly, <laughs> Mainly just, just for, for us, us when we listen back to our, our own recordings. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Your head is pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. If you're in your 30s, if you're younger than 30, you're probably good, so... You know, what else? <laughs> That's right. Next Sunday after you shoot. Just found our target demo. Another wedding. Dun, dun, dun. Dustin, I have been watching Chernobyl. Have you watched Chernobyl yet? No, but I just saw somebody that I'm friends with uh, message me asking me that same question today. He said it was one of the best television series he's ever seen produced on TV. <laughs> Which I thought was a very bold um, statement. Dustin, I'm going to have to stop you right there. It's not TV. It's HBO. Sorry. So it's like super TV? I'm just saying it's not TV. It's HBO. Uh, uh, so track. The, guy, the guy who wrote Chernobyl is uh, Craig Mazin. I've mm-hmm. talked about him before. He runs the podcast mm-hmm. called Script Notes that I'm a real big fan of. And uh, Mm -hmm. you might know him from such movie credits as like Scary Movie 3 and 4, I think, and The Hangover 2 and 3. Can't say that I do, but continue. (laughs) Um, So this is like the first thing, as far, like from what he's talked about on script notes, Chernobyl's like the first thing that like he's been able to write where it's like something he pitched and like somebody was just like, yes, as opposed to people like hiring him on to do other stuff, I think. 
um, like sequels and stuff like that. Or yeah. tr- trequels. But uh, it's mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, so he's always been fascinated with Chernobyl and the meltdown that happened there. And uh, he he wrote like a whole series for HBO and pitched it to them and they bought it. And then, you know, got to like run it. And for like the last year of script notes, he was like constantly over in Europe, like shooting and like rewriting on set and stuff like that. It was really cool. But uh, this last week on script notes, he gave a talk about how to write um, movies well, not just movies, but like just how to write a story in general. And it's like a talk he's given several times at, I think, the South by Southwest Film Festival. And um, it was just like super, super interesting to hear. He's an incredibly smart person. So it's one of my favorite podcasts, just because him and his podcast co-host, John August, the guy who wrote uh, Big Fish and a bunch of other stuff with uh, Tim Burton. Um, and stuff without Tim Burton, too. <laughs> but... Uh, they just talk about like the art of writing and what really goes into it and stuff like that. And it's probably the most interesting one, one of the most interesting podcasts out there, I would say other than our podcast, Dustin, is that better? I saw you yawning over there. Yeah. I've been Man, watching are they taking a toll on you. You've been watching Lucifer. How's that? It's two I keep seeing it recommended two... in Netflix. I, I know. I feel like Netflix keeps throwing it in my face that I was like, I might as well finally give in to Satan. You're like, Satan, <sighs> I know I've told you many times before to get behind me, but get in front of me now and get on my TV screen. I got my peepers wide open, and I want to see what happens when you open a dance club. Well, I, I had started watching it when it first came on TV, and I said, I can't, as a religious scholar, I can't <laughs> watch this. Because it conflicts too much just, with what I know of the Lucifer from the Bible. <laughs> Me, well, Dustin, no, it's just, the religious it, scholar. If there, was ever, if there was ever a Satan out there and he was like trying to figure out a way to... Uh, I don't even know what word I'm looking for, but like kind of make people not hate him as much or not vilify him as much um, and soften people to his viewpoints why would he not just make a tv show about him as the sexy good guy or counterpoint why would he not just make a bible that says um you're not allowed to eat shrimp you're not allowed to sit uh in a seat that a woman who's on her time of the month has sat in um you're not allowed Mm -hmm. to uh be in love with somebody of the same sex as you like maybe maybe he could have just written that Bible and then you know that would have turned people against God. If I feel like that one would have been a much easier way to get it done than maybe producing a TV show in in the years. No, TV show thousands. much easier these days. These days, you're talking time travel. That uh, was a little bit more complicated. Um, but yeah, so I was kind of morally opposed to the show. But Netflix has a way of breaking down our moral amb- ambitions. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm watching it I'm on season two. I, I gave in. I said, no, I said no to Buffy, the vampire slayer. I said no to angel. I said no to supernatural and to Reaper, but I've given in now and I'm watching Lucifer. What's Reaper? That's the one about the grim Reaper's son who like is alive on earth or something like that. I don't think I've ever heard of that one. I heard of the other ones. I've watched all those, but not not Reaper. You've watched all the other ones. Good, good. Of course, Steve. I'm a child of the '80s. There, Michelle Geller. Yes, please. Were you even born in the '80s? Uh, yeah. Look at this hair. Zach Morris written all over it. I think you're confusing the '80s with the '90s. I was born in the 80s, but I grew up in the 90s. So you're a child of the 90s then, right? Just say I was saved by the bell. I was the French prince of Bel Air. Not the fresh prince, the French prince. I'm sorry, you're going to have to explain that one to me. Save that for another day. Maybe the Patreon. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Patreon. All right. Does this stuff even make it in the show anymore, or is this only for the extended version? It makes it in the show. It's all in the show. Because when you're here, 
family, just like Dustin says at the end of every single episode, because family matters, Steve Urkel. Oh, well played, sir. Did I do that? Well played. I just need some breadsticks now, though. You're making me want some breadsticks. All right, let's say goodbye. Bye. Bye, Stephen. Just jumping right back on the pony. (sighs) Even if I have to throw him up later. As you should. Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs. Woo-wee!